Rickford, the MP from Kenora. Thanks for uh, getting a hold of us at Net News Ledger to tell us about uh, the budget. What's the good news? What's the bad news? Yeah, well, first of all, it's my pleasure uh, and uh, my compliments to your media outlet for serving uh, an area that's very important to me and that's some of the farthest remote uh, and isolated communities in, in northwestern uh, Ontario. So thank you for this opportunity. I think, uh, James, today um, we, um, in the shortest sentence possible, have set the table to um, balance our budget. Um, this is something that Canadians saw as a top priority. We've seen recent pollings about what is on the minds of Canadian Canadians and fiscal responsibility. Um, and working towards a balanced budget um, is, is the top priority. Uh, we're going to build through this budget on a number of key areas nationally that are important to us all in Northern Ontario, focusing on job uh, creation um, and continuing to put our communities in the best position possible for economic development that's sustainable and making our businesses uh, uh, more competitive uh, and in a, the best position possible, obviously, for um, the benefit of job creation. So to that end, in Northern Ontario, we, uh, just to highlight a few things, have put a particular emphasis on forestry, mineral exploration, extensive trail systems, uh, increasing broadband uh, for Northern communities. This is a key piece, uh, reducing violence for Aboriginal women um, and improving the health and safety of uh, First Nations communities. Uh, obviously, uh, your listeners um, and your readers uh, saw live the uh, K-12 education announcement, um, and we're also uh, highlighting the Canada Apprentice Loan to work with Red Seal Trades and provide uh, interest-free uh, loans each year. So, um, you know, those are the things that mean a lot to folks in Northern Ontario. We know that uh, we have a skilled labour force there, but there's more we can do. Uh, and so to that end, I felt like the budget uh, served Northern Ontarians uh, very well today. The, uh, the areas on uh, Aboriginal education that were announced last week have been particular interest to a lot of our, our readers. Can you outline a little bit about what's happening there? Yeah, this is the, it's called now the First Nations Control, the First Nations Education Act. Uh, it's designed to provide young First Nations students studying on reserve with an accountable uh, high level of education on reserve. We know that one of the key challenges has been um, to provide academic programming for First Nations on reserve that was equivalent to or could be compared to uh, uh, somebody studying at a, at a public school uh, in the province of Ontario. What we've created in full partnership with the Assembly of First Nations, obviously National Chief Sean at Leo called it a historic uh, moment, uh, is that it represents an opportunity through legislation that we're developing word for word and lockstep with our uh, stakeholders um, to ensure that with the resources the federal government is going to provide, we put guarantees uh, on uh, the education authorities um, to deliver an equivalent uh, year to year and certainly by grade 12 uh, equivalent high school diploma. Uh, this is one of the major challenges. I know if you talk to the folks at Lakehead University or Confederation College, obviously some students spend a couple of years doing upgrading uh, for the program that they intend to study, and, and it's in large part due to the fact that uh, the grade 12s haven't obviously been at, uh, at par with a grade 12 graduate from a public school system. So this is a key priority, but there is accountability built in, and we want to ensure that taxpayers get the best bang for their buck, but that First Nation students graduate with an equivalent grade 12 diploma. You're the Minister for Science and Technology. Uh, what's in the budget to uh, hit the digital economy and the science and technology sector? Well, thank you for asking. I think this was, in no uh, uh, uncertain terms, a landmark day for science, technology and innovation uh, for all Canadians. I was pleased to stand with Minister Flaherty today and announce Canada's first research excellence fund, $1.5 billion over the next decade. This is going to be focused on research institutions who want to excel globally in research areas that create uh, long-term economic advantages for Canadians. I was also pleased uh, today, James, to announce support for leading-edge research through the granting councils. As you know, my portfolio, a significant amount of the funding flows through uh, three major granting councils in peer-reviewed uh, authorization for uh, that research to, per, uh, to proceed. 
um, and we announced as well additional support for the infrastructure that's required in carrying out that federal research. But I guess if, as, a, as a college graduate myself, one of the uh, real important things, and I know folks in Thunder Bay will appreciate this, we announced uh, uh, $10 million over two years in support of social innovation research projects at uh, um, colleges and polytechnics um, it, it, it specifically. And James, I know this would be important to your listeners. Um, this research for colleges and poly polytechnics um, is designed to look at tools uh, for addressing society's needs in areas of education and integration of vulnerable populations and community development. I think there's a focus there that we can all relate to. I think cities like Thunder Bay um, experience that, and this is going to provide an opportunity for uh, those colleges and po polytechnics to provide on-the-ground uh, research that will make a real difference in people's lives, people who are moving from isolated and remote communities into the big city for one reason or another. These are the kinds of things that this research contemplates. The, uh, the issue with the Ring of Fire is, is very, very much on the minds of people across northern Ontario. Mm -hmm. What can you tell us? Well, certainly from the budget, we were pleased to announce the extension of the 15% mineral exploration tax credit. Um, this helps companies continue their operations uh, in their explorations, and we know that's been a key part and continues to be a key part of the Ring of Fire. And we have maintained our commitment uh, to FedNor and obviously the money that goes, uh, the resources that go to uh, Anishinaabe Aski Nation for their business development um, programs that they're offering for uh, communities. And obviously the big hit uh, with the Matawa communities is the, um, is the uh, support for uh, college-specific uh, skills training uh, that will put them in the best position possible for a job that's in the line of sight. Uh, we know that uh, there are still challenges with Ring of Fire, but we're very encouraged by Noron's enthusiasm, their submission of their comprehensive environmental assessment. I think it represents an opportunity to re-examine um, some of the priorities for uh, infrastructure uh, support for that. And Of course, last year in Building Canada Fund, we created an opportunity uh, with projects like the Ring of Fire in mind uh, to, you know, build roads and, and, and bridges and, and look at uh, the electrification of our isolated remote communities that would ultimately make their way up to the Ring of Fire. So in short, James, I feel like we're still very well positioned uh, for communities to uh, have real benefits uh, uh, from this development. And obviously we continue to encourage our, our provincial counterparts um, to deal with some of the outstanding issues like own source revenue, which is squarely within their jurisdiction. Uh, and obviously the Ontario Land Commissioner's report, uh, which deals with an ongoing dispute as between private parties and the role of the province is absolutely critical in resolving it. Is there anything in the budget that you'd like to have seen and you still have work to do in, in your ministry or in the region that uh, will come for next year? I No, frankly. Um, over the past four years, we've made substantial and unprecedented investments in infrastructure across uh, northern Ontario. We've seen very little, if any, in the way of, uh, of reduced services from any federal government departments operating in northern Ontario. We've seen substantial increases in infrastructure and community economic development. Northern Ontarians uh, still believe, uh, also believe that balancing the books is a, is a top priority. They also identify their specific priorities, uh, which we've dealt with in last year's budget, and then in further support of that, focusing on um, advancing technologies in Canada's forestry companies, extending mineral, mineral exploration um, tax credits, and, and I'm not sure if I emphasize this enough, but improving and expanding snowmobile and recreational trails uh, throughout Ontario obviously was a key announcement today for the recreational part uh, of our life. So uh, these are things that I think are responsible. They're measured, James. There's no doubt about this. Um, but uh, we are squarely focused on, on reaching um, a balanced budget uh, next year, and this is the pathway there. Greg Ripford, Member of Parliament for Kenora, thank you for taking the time to talk with us at Net News Ledger.